Windows 98. While not a major upgrade from its predecessor, Windows 95, has turned out to be, at least in my opinion, one of the best versions of Windows of all time. Even when it was superseded by Windows ME, 2000 and even XP, a lot of people still used it right up into the mid-2000s. Indeed, I used to hear of a lot of people who really had issues with Windows XP. Um, hardware compatibility problems with either their hardware or software, or the fact that it couldn't necessarily play all of the games that people were wanting to play, made people stick with Windows 98 as, unlike ME, it was actually quite reliable for the type of operating system it was. And some people would even go as far as to install Windows 98 on brand new builds in the mid 2000s. Nowadays, people who enjoy retro gaming on era appropriate PCs will often use Windows 98 as the operating system to run their old games as it makes a good all-round operating system for playing old games thanks to its running on top of MS-DOS and its compatibility with a lot of hardware and software from the early 90s to the early to mid 2000s. Hi folks, the Blank Scotsman here and welcome to this video. As June the 25th marks the 20th birthday of Microsoft Windows 98, I thought I would celebrate its score year anniversary by looking back on some of the history of Microsoft Windows 98 and, to a lesser extent, Internet Explorer 4.0 and the active desktop update for Windows 95 and NT4. So what exactly is Windows 98? Well, Windows 98 is a graphical operating system by Microsoft. It's the second major release in the Windows 9X line of operating systems and the successor to Windows 95. It was released to manufacturing on May the 15th, 1998 and to retail on June the 25th, 1998. Like its predecessor, Windows 98 is a hybrid 16 and 32-bit monolithic product with the boot stage based on MS-DOS. Windows 98 was succeeded by Windows 98 Second Edition on May the 5th, 1999, which in turn was succeeded by Windows ME on September the 14th, 2000. Microsoft ended mainstream support for Windows 98 and 98 SE on June the 30th, 2002 and extended support on July the 11th, 2006. The startup sound for Windows 98 was composed by Microsoft sound, sound engineer Ken Cato, who considered it to be a tough act to follow. So Windows 98 succeeded Windows 95. But in order to be able to properly appreciate Windows 98, we should probably take a quick wee look at Windows 95. So let's do that now. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, Microsoft Windows 90 95. So before Windows 98 came out, this was the latest version of Windows. Well, I say that, there was 95 and NT4, but Windows 98 was never really considered an upgrade to NT4. That would come later. However, this is the OSR2 release of Windows 95. It has, um, it's Windows 95, but it has quite a lot of enhancements, updates, and the whole operating system is really quite nicely refined from the original. If uh, if we have a look around, we see that um, 
Internet Explorer 3 is included, although not actually set up to access the internet. Um, if we go into my computer, let's see if we can uh, see if we can get on some uh, pictures. If we go to my computer and we go browsing through the file system, we see that um, it opens a new window for every um, folder that's opened. This can be changed by um, selecting browse folders using a single window that changes as you open each folder and then adding a nice sweet oop, a nice sweet toolbar, like so. And then if we once again go through the folders, we find that um, everything is all just in the one folder. So very neat, very uh, very nice. The uh, start menu. Um, we look at the start menu um, you can't move apps around it in Windows 95 and uh, they all stay in alphabetical order so let's uh, start something at random let's say Microsoft Word oh hey there paperclip and then we'll close it again Windows 95 obviously had some limitations in the UI department. For example, if I go back to the My Computer window, if I want to resize the window, it doesn't draw. It it actually um, doesn't draw the window resizing. It just kind of draws the edges. Now you could change this if you had access to Microsoft Plus, which was a paid add-on for Windows 95. But I do believe Tweak uh, Yui would uh, do it as well. And if you clicked on the button for an active window, it just make the window kind of inactive. Um, there was no quick launch bar in Windows 95, as you can see. And the icons, unless you have Microsoft Plus or some other such... Um, custom setup program the icons were 16 colors there was no font smoothing initially um, and the desktop could either be centered or tiled again like I said a lot of these features came with Microsoft Plus which was like I've said before a paid add-on to Microsoft Windows 95 Games are the usual fare. You had um, Free Cell, Hearts, Minesweeper, and of course Solitaire. Um, obviously, in later versions of Windows 95, you had um, Active Movie uh, support. That I believe came with the Internet Explorer 3 on Windows 95 OS R2. Now, there was a version actually of Windows 95 that incorporated something that I am going to show you called the Active Desktop Update. Uh, this was um, the quite rare actually uh, Windows 95 OSR 2.5C um, and what that would do is it would install Windows 95 uh, without this version of uh, the Microsoft Network. I've always kind of thought that that looked like a Ribena juice box from the 90s. I don't know why um, that old MSN logo uh, but uh, Windows 95 OSR 2.5c comes with more enhancements and after setting up Windows it then goes on to install Internet Explorer 4 and we're going to do that now
So now we're going to install Internet Explorer 4 over the top of version 3. Now I think this version really kind of put Internet Explorer on the map for Microsoft. Now what's this? Windows Desktop Update. Internet Explorer 4 includes a Windows Desktop Update as an optional component. This update adds true web integration to your Windows experience. A web enhanced active desktop taskbar, start menu and folders. Would I like to install it? Why yes, yes I would. Unfortunately, when Scotland becomes independent, there's not going to be an option for Scotland in the active desktop settings. <laughs> it's 21 years old, it's this program. It's, oh, it's got the key of the door. Oh no. IE4's got the key of the door. We are all doomed. When Bush left office, IE4 was only 11 years old. Thanks, Obama. And now we are going to see this Windows 95 install, except with the Active Desktop update. I mean, that's the plan anyway, but uh, we'll just see how that goes. And in a moment, we'll see a dialog box that is still with us today in Windows 10. This one! Does this look familiar? Obviously in Windows 10 it wouldn't be uh, setting up personalised settings for IE4. At least I would hope not. And there you have it. Now I remember this screen coming up all the time. Um, with the Presario 2240 Microsoft Internet Explorer 4. Now that would actually come up in place of the Welcome to Windows 95 dialog box. Um, Welcome to Internet Explorer 4.0. Click start for a quick tour. So IE4 was obviously trying to move the game on from Internet Explorer. It had gone from being, Internet Explorer had gone from being something that you got as part of the Microsoft Plus pack to something that was very tightly woven into the operating system and a lot of people did not like it. One of the more vocal people on this subject is um, of course Nathan Lineback who runs ToastyTech.com. He really is not into uh, all the webby uh, style interface that has been a part of Microsoft Windows uh, now since, uh, well basically since the IE4 desktop update in 1997. Now as far as the active desktop itself is concerned what it is is desktop as a web page basically back in the day you had a thing called channels kind of um i would say it's kind of cross between an rss feed and a desktop uh, widget or gadget or whatever you want to call it basically you could um, if you're on a website that had the weather you could subscribe to its channel and then you can put that weather page on the desktop you know, so that you'd always have the weather there, or you could have maybe stocks or something like that. Um, the only problem with this is 
not only was it a drain on the computer's resources, indeed, um, you know, I was always uh, I was always told uh, by one of my uh, teachers to switch off the active desktop because it just took up too much memory. That was a problem, but also the idea of having a constant feed of information from the internet to your desktop sounded romantic, but at the time most people were using a dial-up connection. So a couple of problems with that. Um, most people didn't always leave their dial-up on, so they always had, uh, often would not be able to stream the most up-to-date information to the desktop. Um, either they, it would cost them a lot to have the internet running all the time or even if they were on a flat rate plan it would um, still tie up a phone line. So I think IE4 channels were a wee bit ahead of their time and not really uh, conducive. Uh, the internet infrastructure at the time was not conducive to them in the same way that I don't think the internet structure today is conducive to um, Chromebooks uh, before they had uh, b before they had more offline things like Android apps but that's another story so what do you get in this active desktop update well you can probably see the quick launch toolbar um, you get four shortcuts by default in IE4 um, Internet Explorer Outlook Express, uh, Show Desktop and View Channels. But you would get quite a bit more and look at the start menu. It is now, I don't know how they did it, but it's grown exponentially tall. And to be honest, I really didn't like the way the start menu looked um, with IE4. I mean, it, it kind of became a wee bit better proportioned once IE5 is installed on a, on a computer with an active desktop. Um, because Internet Explorer 5, well, it did not itself include the Active Desktop update, uh, nor did any other version of Internet Explorer after IE4, it did bring refinements to computers with the Active Desktop update. However, what you could do is, um, if you wanted to, you could uh, drag, um, you could drag things around. You could reorganize your start menu. Again, Internet Explorer uh, 5 will give you a sort by name option. Um, in the documents uh, submenu, on uh, at least Internet Explorer 4.01, you got a um, shortcut to my documents, which wasn't traditionally a folder in Windows 95, but became one. And um, We've opened up my documents and what's this? It looks like an internet page. Well, well, it doesn't look necessarily... Well, it does look like an internet page, but more importantly, it looks like an Internet Explorer window, and that's essentially because it is. The old, the old streamlined... Well, the old smaller Windows 95 Explorer shell has been dumped in favour of a more webby style one. And indeed, you can actually put a links bar and you've got your favourites menu. So if I was connected to the internet on this machine, I could actually go to any one of these links and it would take me straight onto the internet through this window. Of course, I'm not on the net, so all I get is this. So what else do you get? Well, some versions of Internet Explorer uh, Active Desktop Update will give you, in fact, this one, will actually redraw windows um, on the fly as you're dragging them or even resizing them. Look at that. And if you uh, click on a, the button to an active window, it'll minimize itself to the desktop. And that is a feature that's still with us today, and it's quite a useful one.
what else is new? Well, the links bar has got a lot on it, too much to fit on the screen at one time or on the bar itself. Now, in IE4, to access the uh, links that can't fit on the screen, you scroll back and forth. It's a wee bit cumbersome. And that's the same if uh, you had uh, more icons on the quick launch toolbar but didn't make it big enough to accommodate them all. And in the start menu, if you install more programs on it, too many to fit on the screen. Whereas Windows 95 would have showed a dual column view, you have uh, Internet, Explor Internet Explorer for its uh, enhanced Windows Explorer will actually scroll the um, programs. Again, I find that scrolling a wee bit cumbersome and I'm glad that in Windows 2000 onwards you're actually able to um, set it back to the column view. Anyway, so what do you get with IE4? Well, quite a bit actually, if you go for the full install. You've got the browser, Outlook Express, which replaces internet mail and news, um, and also Windows Messaging, although that is still there, should you uh, want to continue using it. Um, an address book, Connection Wizard, um, Front Page Express, basic uh, WYSIWYG um, HTML editor, Microsoft Chat, uh, IRC Chat Client I believe. Microsoft Net Meeting, which was an early um, co video conferencing uh, application. Quite similar to what um, Skype is now, or Link, or Teams I guess, but um, I've never used Net Meeting. Um, Outlook Express, which, yeah. Um, Web Publishing Wizard, and for some reason they started bundling for a short while in IE4 and 5, they started bundling Windows Media Player with um, Internet Explorer. I don't know why they did that, but um, apparently they did. Probably for Internet Media. Actually, in Internet Explorer you, you got a, an old version of Rail Player as well, so that was, uh, that was something. But um, yep, there you go, you get the uh, more modern uh, Windows Media Player. Not a bad little player, isn't this? In fact, uh, this is uh, what people, you know, people kind of uh, like this media player and this, um, and the love of it, you know, the simplified interface, is where Media Player Classic, I do believe, has came from. So there you go. And you see a lot more use of uh, flat buttons um, including for the uh, file, uh, for the menu bar in Explorer windows. However, um, Windows 95 still uses um, the uh, colored um, highlighted uh, but, uh, menu bar. Well, it still uses um, a colored highlight on the uh, menu bar when you click um, items on the main menu bar, unlike um, IE4 Windows and Windows 98 Windows and even Office 97 Windows. However, the icons are still in 16 colour mode, you don't really get a choice on that, like I said, unless you have Microsoft Plus or some other such program. But if you do enable 256 colour icon mode and you have the active desktop update installed, your icon set has replaced the ugly flat, well in my opinion, the really ugly kind of flatter icons of Microsoft Plus are actually replaced with um, the nicer looking kind of almost 3D-esque icons of uh, Windows 98. So that is, uh, that is Windows 95 with internet well, that's Windows 95 with and without Internet Explorer 4. So, let's go back to the rest of the video. So, 
what we've just seen there was Windows 95 both with and without the active desktop update. So on to Windows 98. Windows 98 includes Internet Explorer 4.01 in first edition and 5.0 in second edition. Besides Internet Explorer, many Internet companion applications are included, such as Outlook Express, Windows Address Book, Front Page Express, which is a web page editor, Microsoft Chat, Personal Web Server, and the Web Publishing Wizard, NetMeeting, and Natural Player, which was replaced by Windows Media Player 6.2 in Windows 98 Second Edition. The Windows 98 shell integrates all of the enhancements from the Windows Desktop Update, an Internet Explorer 4 component, such as the Quick Launch Toolbar, Active Desktop, Channels, Ability to minimise foreground windows by clicking their button on the taskbar, single click launching, back and forward navigation buttons, favourites and address bar in Windows Explorer, image thumbnails, folder info tips, and web view in folders, as well as folder customization through HTML based templates. Another feature of this new shell is that dialog boxes show up in alt tab sequence. Windows 98 also integrates shell enhancements, themes and other features from Microsoft Plus for Windows 95, such as Dry Space 3, Compression Engine, Dial-Up Networking Server, Dial-Up Scripting Tool, and Task Scheduler. 3D Pinball is included on the CD-ROM, but not installed by default. Windows 98 had its own separately purchasable plus pack called Plus 98. Title bars of the windows in the dialog boxes support two colour gradients. Windows menus and tooltips support slide animation. Windows Explorer windows in Windows 98. Like Windows 95 converts all uppercase file names to sentence case for readability purposes. However, it also provides an option allow all uppercase file names to display them in their original case. Windows Explorer includes support for compressed cab files. The Quick Res and Telephony Location Manager Windows 95 Power Toys are integrated into the core operating system. Now under the hood there was changes between Windows 95 and 98 so it's not all cosmetic. The Windows driver model was included with Windows 98. In fact it was the first operating system to use the Windows driver model. The fact was not well publicised when Windows 98 was released and most hardware producers continued to develop drivers for the older VXD driver standard which Windows 98 supported for compatibility's sake. The WDM standard only achieved widespread adaptation years later, mostly through Windows 2000 and XP, as they were not compatible with the older VXD standard. Windows driver model was introduced largely so that developers would write drivers that were source compatible with future versions of Windows. Support for WDM audio enables digital mixing, routing and processing of simultaneous audio streams and kernel streaming with high quality sample rate conversion on Windows 98. WDM audio allows for software emulation of legacy hardware to support MS-DOS games direct sound support and MIDI wavetable synthesis. The Windows 95 11 device limitation for MIDI devices is eliminated. A Microsoft GS wavetable synthesizer licensed from Roland ships with Windows 98 for WDM audio drivers. Windows 98 supports digital playback of audio CDs. And the second edition improves WDM audio support 
by adding direct sound hardware mixing and direct sound 3D hardware abstraction. So what about USB then? Well, Windows 98 had more robust USB support. For example, support for USB composite devices than Windows 95, which only had support in OEM versions OSR 2.1 or later. Windows 98 supports USB hubs, scanners, and imaging class devices. Windows 98 also introduces built-in support for some USB human interface devices. USB HID and PID class devices such as USB mice, keyboards, force feedback joysticks, etc. Including additional keyboard functions through a certain number of consumer page HID controls. USB audio device class support is present from Windows 98 second edition onwards. Windows 98 second edition improved WDM support in general for all devices and it introduced support for WDM for modems and therefore USB modems and com virtual COM ports, Microsoft driver support for both USB printers and for USB mass storage device class is not available in Windows 98. Support for both was introduced in Windows 2000. However, generic third-party free drivers are available today for USB mass storage devices. As far as a CPI can, is concerned, Windows 98 introduced version 1.0 support which enabled standby S3 and hibernate S4 state. However, hibernation support was extremely limited and vendor specific. Hibernation was only available if compatible plug and play hardware and a BIOS are present. And the hardware manufacturer or OEM supplied compatible WDM drivers. Non-VXD drivers, however, there are hibernation issues with the FAT32 file system, making hibernation problematic and unreliable. Windows 98 in general provides improved and a, broad, a broader range of support for IDE and SCSI drives and drive, drive controllers, floppy drive controllers and all other classes of hardware than Windows 95. There is integrated accelerated graphics port support, although the USB supplement to Windows 95 OSR 2 and later releases of Windows 95 did have ADP support. Windows 98 has built-in DVD support with UDF 1.02 read support. That said, you do need a third-party decoder for DVD movie support, DVD video support. The still, imming ar still Imaging Architecture, STI, with Twain support was introduced for scanners and cameras and Image Color Management 2.0 for devices to perform color space transformations. Multiple monitor support allows using up to eight multiple monitors and or multiple graphics adapters on a single PC. Windows 98 shipped with DirectX 5.2, which notably in included Direct Show. Windows 98 Second Edition shipped with DirectX 6.1. Windows 98 networking enhancements for to TCP/IP include built-in support for WinSock 2. SMB signing, a new IP helper API, automatic private IP addressing, also known as linked local addressing, IP multicasting, and performance enhancements for high speed, high bandwidth networks, TCP, large windows, timestamps, etc. And Multi-homing support with TCP IP in, is improved and includes our IP listener support. The DHCP client has been enhanced to include address assignment conflict detection and longer timeout intervals. NetBT configuration in the WinS client has been improved 
to continue persistently querying multiple WinS servers, even if it failed to establish the initial session until all of the WinS servers specified have been queried or a connection is established. NDIS 5.0 support means Windows 98 can support a wide range of network media including Ethernet, Fiber Distributed Data Interface, Token Ring, Asynchronous Transfer Mode, Wide Area Networks, ISDN, X.25 and Frame Relay. Windows 98 dial-up networking supports PPTP tunneling, support for IDSN adapters, multi-link support and connection time scripting to automate non-standard login connections. Multi-link channel aggregation enables users to combine all the available dial-up lines to achieve higher transfer speed. PPP connection logs can show actual packets being passed and Windows 98 allows PPP logging per connection. The dial-up networking improvements are also available in Windows 95 OSR2 and downloadable for earlier Windows 95 releases. For networked computers that have user profiles enabled, Windows, 95, uh, Windows 98 introduces Microsoft Family Login which lists all the users that have been configured for that computer, enabling users to simply select their names from a list rather than having to type it in. The same feature can be added to Windows 95 if Internet Explorer 4.0 is installed. Windows 98 supports IRDA 3.0 that specifies both Serial Infrared Devices SIR, and Fast Infrared Devices FIR which are capable of sending and receiving data at 4 megabits a second. Windows 98 supports right behind caching for removable disk drives, a FAT32 converter utility for converting FAT16 drives to FAT32 without formatting the partition is also included. A number of improvements are made to various other system tools and accessories in Windows 98. Microsoft Backup supports differential backups and SCSI tape devices in Windows 98. Disk Cleanup, a new tool, enables users to clean their disks of unnecessary files. Cleanup locations are extensible through disk cleanup handlers. Disk cleanup can be automated for regular silent cleanups. ScanReg, DOS and ScanReg W are registry checker tools used to back up, restore and optimise a Windows registry. ScanRegW tests the registry's integrity and saves a backup copy each time Windows successfully boots. The maximum amount of copies could be customised by the user through the ScanReg.ini file. The restoration of a registry that causes Windows to fail to boot can only be done from DOS mode using ScanReg. System Configuration Utility, also known as MSConfig, is a new system utility used to disable programs and services that are not required to run the computer. A maintenance wizard is included that schedules and automates scan disk, disk defragmenter and disk cleanup. Windows Script Host with VB Script and JScript engines is built in and upgradable to version 5.6. System File Checker checks installed versions of system files to ensure they were the same versions as the one installed with Windows 98 or newer. Corrupt or older versions are replaced by the correct versions. This tool was introduced to resolve the DLL Hell issue and was replaced in Windows ME by System File Protection. The Windows 98 startup disk contains generic real mode ATAPI and SCSI CD-ROM drivers and has been pre-configured to automatically start MS-DOS mode with CD-ROM support enabled. For computers without an operating system that do not support booting from optical drives, 
The startup disk can be used to boot into MS-DOS and automatically start Windows 98 setup from the CD. The system could be updated using Windows Update, a utility to automatically notify of critical updates was later released. Windows 98 includes an improved version of the Dr. Watson utility that collects and lists comprehension, comprehensive information such as running tasks, startup programs with their command line switches, system patches, kernel driver, user drivers, DOS drivers and 16-bit modules. With Dr. Watson loaded in the system tray whenever a software fault occurs, general protection fault, hang, etc. Dr. Watson will intercept it and indicate what software crashed and its cause. All of the collected information is logged to the Windows slash Dr. Watson folder. Windows Report Tool takes a snapshot of system configuration and lets users submit a manual problem report along with the system information to technicians. It has email confirmation for submitted reports. Windows 98 includes Microsoft Magnifier, Accessibility Wizard, a Microsoft Active Accessibility 1.1 API, upgraded, upgradable to MSAA 2.0. A new HTML help system with 15 troubleshooting wizards was introduced to replace WinHelp. A utility to convert the FAT16 file system to FAT32 is provided. Users can configure the font in Notepad. Microsoft Paint supports GIF transparency. Hyperterminal supports a TCP IP connection method, which allows it to be used as a Telnet client. Imaging for Windows is updating, updated. System Monitor supports output to a log file. And then there are a few miscellaneous improvements, including um, Telephony API 2.1, Deconversion 1.2, Ability to list fonts by similarity determined using Panos information, Tools to automate setup such as Batch98 and uh, inst.exe, Support error checking, gathering information to automatically create a .inf file directly from the registry of the machine, customizing IE4, shell and desktop settings and adding custom drivers. Several other resource kit tools are included on the Windows 98 CD. Windows 98 has new system event sounds for low battery alarm and critical battery alarm. Windows 98 shipped with the Flash Player and the Shockwave Player pre-installed. So now, let's take a look at Windows 98. So folks, here it is. Microsoft Windows 98. First edition. And let me tell you, this was an absolute pig to install compared to second edition. Obviously, um, it still has Windows 95's problem with the CPUs clocked at over 2.1 gigahertz. So I'm running this in PCM version 14, um, emulating a Pentium 233 megahertz uh, CPU with multimedia extensions. Um, so we finally got it up and running. <coughs> So, how does Windows 98 differ from Windows 95? Well, obviously, if you're still using the classic shell in Windows 95, you would notice now that um, the active uh, desktop update is here. So, you've got the uh, quick launch bar, you have um, a webby view in my computer, and uh, other Windows Explorer windows. You actually now have a My Documents folder on the desktop and it has a wee icon. So this is um, 
your documents folder. And if you were to set up uh, multiple user profiles on Windows 98, then and you were um, where to customize, uh, have each profile be uh, separately customizable, then you would find that every, everyone who logs onto the machine would have their own separate My Documents folder. On the desktop itself, you've got um, you've got a new version of uh, the Microsoft Network. Um, connect to the internet. That is now something on here. Um, if you double click on that, then you have um, well, basically you have a slightly improved version of the internet connection wizard so I'm guessing would um, yep that uh, does appear um, when you start up Internet Explorer once you've actually um, run through the uh, connect to the internet wizard the Internet Explorer icon does appear on the desktop so what else do you have in Windows 98 well the uh, menus are now animated as you can possibly see um, unfortunately um, Windows 98 um, well Windows with the active desktop update has this tendency to um, after a while forget to arrange the um, uh, start menu in alphabetical order so which also organizes program groups um, and programs themselves kind of separately program folders not groups it's not Windows 3.1 um, and unfortunately this can you know it can forget to um, sort these out so newest installed applications will appear at the bottom of the uh, start menu of the uh, programs menu and even at the top of the start menu where I've installed Office 97 a new Office document and open Office document are under the Windows Update icon um, like I said in uh, if you install Internet Explorer 5 you do get the um, sort by name option if you right click and you can also rename icons as well so you have that but Windows 98 is more than just superficial changes you have a few other things as well uh, but um, there is one superficial change in now that the multimedia uh, subgroup and accessories is now known as entertainment and you have the Windows 98 interactive CD sampler uh, media player trial programs that's quite interesting actually that that should be there um, I should um, I should maybe give that a go. You know what? Maybe uh, maybe that could be another video. Um, but next time I'll try it on uh, actual hardware. I think I have uh, the Toshiba uh, Tecra eight hundred, which uh, runs Windows ninety eight FE. Um, but you do have a fair amount of other applications. Um. In system tools. Now since the original Windows 95 came out and Microsoft Plus came out, bits of Microsoft Plus had uh, been added to Windows 95. Usually it was only the utilities. So for example the disk compression agent and um, other, I believe drive space as well. But now there's more. You now have uh, system information, which uh, is kind of like the Apple system profiler, and it gives you basic information about your system, um, but it doesn't give you as much information as I would maybe have liked. But um, hey ho, that's um, that's absolutely fine. Um, You also have 
the drive converter FAT32. Now, I should probably talk a bit about this in that uh, Windows 98, um, one of the features that it touted was um, support for a new improved file system called FAT32, which would let you um, which would let you actually have drives of over two gigabytes and you know partitions of over two gigabytes rather with um, you know from yeah basically right up into uh, right up to two terabytes believe it or not fat 32 will support partition sizes apparently theoretically up to two terabytes uh, but trust me, you probably wouldn't want to do that because, unfortunately, uh, with the file allocation table file system, uh, the bigger the partition, the larger the cluster size, which basically makes file storage very inefficient. However, FAT32 was the latest incar uh, incarnation of the... Incar bleh, what's the latest incarnation of the uh, FAT file system? And... Obviously, Microsoft advertised that as coming with Windows 98, whereas actually, it was available in Windows 95B. But of course, Windows 95B wasn't actually available to consumers, to end consumers necessarily. Um, it was it was an OEM release. In fact, uh, everything after Windows 95 RTM was. Um, so as a result. Um, you know, if you wanted to buy Windows 95, you would have ended up with the um, released manufacturing version, which is quite a shame because Windows 95 improved with every uh, iteration, of which there was quite a few. And like I said, uh, from OSR2 or B onwards, you had FAT32 support, but you couldn't convert the drive on the fly to FAT32. Whereas on Windows 98, you can actually do that. Convert a FAT16 drive to FAT32, uh, you know, without having to fully format it. So that is a good feature to have. Now you also have a maintenance wizard as well. So what that does is it helps you to schedule things and my uh, schedule maintenance tasks um, and it will help you to actually schedule them so you can um, so let's go through it so when would you want Windows to run maintenance tasks um, you've got a few suggestions or you can make custom settings so this would be something that you would do when you're not actually using your machine just leave it running and it would uh, do it for you and then you have um, obviously uh, things that um, well I like this optimize uh, windows you know stop things from starting um, with windows make it faster and then it would ask if you wanted to, you know, defragment the disk, scan the hard disk for errors, de delete unnecessary files, with another uh, feature from Windows 98. And then if you um, if you click finish, that would actually use the task scheduler to make all these items run. So you have a lot. I'm not going to obviously set any of that up right now, but um, I will show you the disk cleanup utility. Um, if your hard disk is looking a wee bit full, I've got to basically set up a 3.2 gig hard disk, used 608 megs, uh, 618 megs, free 2.63 gigabytes. Okay, well, I could uh, run disk cleanup to see if there's anything that um, I could run to clear, uh, well, see if there's anything taking up space. 
and there's uh, more options so you know I could uh, remove space uh, remove remove uh, gain more space by removing Windows components that I didn't use um, so that would take me to add or remove programs Windows com uh, the Windows setup tab um, where where it'll uh, search for initialized components don't know why Windows 98 felt the need to do that when Windows 95s would load up quickly I'm sure there was a good uh, reason so for example um, you know if I wanted I could remove I could remove um, multi-language support if I didn't want it or multimedia or even the desktop themes we'll come back to that then we've got um, remove programs that I don't use and uh, there's all the um, things I have installed on here and there it goes cleaning up all the files that don't exist and then if I go to the tools tab I mean this was something in Windows 95 you can uh, scan the disk back it up or defrag so there you have it <coughs> and what else do we have in Windows well we have some of the options from Microsoft Plus so remember in Windows 95 I had to install IE4 to be able to drag the window around and have it draw itself in real time you might notice on here at the moment it's not doing that even though the active desktop update is installed what gives? well like I said before this was a feature that came with Microsoft Plus a lot of the features of Microsoft Plus for Windows 95 have found their way into Windows 98 so let's go to the display properties and we see um, well we see hide icons when the desktops viewed as a web page which could be quite useful if you had a you know, web page type thing up here um, we were talking about the active channels a wee bit ago um, you can use large icons if we wanted to so we could apply that and then suddenly we have super large icons and then we could just um, arrange icons by name and yeah there we go got really large icons I think what I'm gonna do is show icons yeah use smaller icons smooth uh, we could turn on font, uh, font smoothing and we can turn on show window contents while dragging so I'm just gonna let these fonts readjust themselves um, rearrange the uh, desktop there we go and I can show you the window will draw itself the window will drag it'll show the window contents while dragging excellent I can also change the icons including the my documents icon so you know I could change my computer icon if I wanted to a printer yeah there we go my computer is a blooming printer so I can change that back again to the default icon and it won't take damn it there we go <laughs> so another feature of Windows 98 that has found its way um, another feature of Microsoft Plus for Windows 95 that's found its way into Windows 98 is the desktop themes now for a lot of people over here Microsoft Plus wasn't necessarily something that people in people bought and installed on their machines in the UK um, at least I, that's what I found um, so the most so the first time people got to see desktop themes oftentimes was Windows 98 and that was the first time I got to see the desktop themes um, so basically what these are if you've not already guessed 
the uh, computer will change. It'll have a theme which will consist of a a color screen, a color scheme for your windows, a desktop background, different icons, and different and uh, different sounds and uh, mouse pointers um, based on the theme. Um, I'm going to not change the sound events just for now and um, the mouse pointers because I've been having problems with changing some of the things. Been having problems with the sounds. So there we go, we have the uh, Leonardo da Vinci desktop theme, so we've got the icons and we've got the um, colour scheme. Now this is the desktop themes program from Windows 95, so it doesn't support some of Windows 98's um, other options. So. Let's um, let's choose a theme, and I can talk talk about uh, some of Windows ninety eight's other um, more uh, more cosmetic uh, design changes. Well, you might have noticed that um, the title bar is now gradiented. This was something that came within Windows ninety eight, so you can have. Um, you can have uh, one colour fading into another. A lot of the themes, a lot of the uh, even uh, colour schemes for Windows 98 didn't take advantage of that. Even the Windows standard will go back to a solid uh, coloured title bar. Which is uh, a bit of a shame considering uh, the uh, default Windows 98 theme usually has um, the lighter blue. What I usually do with the Windows 98 theme, actually, is I would not have such a big start menu getting in the road uh, taskbar. I usually do this and kind of save that shade of blue so that if I want to go back to Windows Standard, that's quite easy to do, I can reapply the correct gradient. Now, I know this is probably OCD as fuck, but to be honest, I really do not care. Um, I know, it's a bit of a shame. Um, and then I just type Windows Standard and then I'll go back and select um, I'll go back and select the um, setup background. And there you go. There you go. We're back. Uh, we're back to square one. But uh, yeah, that is um, that is essentially um, a we walk around the Windows ninety eight desktop. What other features Windows ninety eight had in it? Well, of course, you had um, the USB stack it was pretty much nearly fully compatible in Windows ninety eight. In fact, it pretty much was. But I think uh, that'll do it for a walk around the Windows 98 first edition desktop. Windows 98 had a lot of problems when it was originally released. I myself really didn't like the operating system because Compared to 95, it just seems so slow and sluggish. And even to this day, I do find that um, Internet Explorer 4's active desktop update can be somewhat problematic. Installing Internet Explorer 5 on top of, an, an, uh, of a system with IE4 and the active desktop enabled, however, does tend to improve things by quite a way. But there were other issues. For example, 
the release of Windows 98 was preceded by a notable press demonstration at Comdex in April 1998. Microsoft CEO at the time, Bill Gates, was highlighting the operating system's ease of use and enhanced support for plug and play. However, when presentation assistant Chris Capicella hot plugged a USB scanner in, the operating system crashed, displaying a blue screen of death. Bill Gates remarked after derisive applause and cheering from the audience, that must be why we're not shipping Windows 98 yet. Video footage of this event became a popular internet phenomenon. Microsoft were able to sort out a lot of the teething problems in Windows 98 First Edition by releasing an update. This update was known as Windows 98 Second Edition, often shorted, shortened to SE. This was released on May the 5th, 1999. It includes fixes for many minor issues, improved WDM audio and modem support, improved USB support, the replacement of Internet Explorer 4.0 with Internet Explorer 5.0, web folders, webdav namespace extension for Windows Explorer, and related shell updates. Also included is basic OHCI compliant Firewire, DB camcorder support, and SBP-2 support for mass storage class devices. Wake on LAN support if API, ACPI compatible NDIS drivers are present, and internet connection sharing, which allows multiple computers on a local area network to share a single internet connection through network address translation. Other features in the update include DirectX 6.1, which introduced major improvements to direct sound, and the introduction of direct music. Improvements to asynchronous transfer modem support, IP ATM, PPP over ATM, and WinSock 2 over ATM support. Windows Media Player 6.2 replacing replaced the older Windows Media Player and Microsoft NetShell. Microsoft Net Meeting 3.0, MDAC 2.1 and WMI. A memory overflow issue was resolved, which in the older version of Windows 98 would crash most systems if left for ru running for 49.7 days, equal to 232 milliseconds. Windows 98 SE could be obtained as a retail upgrade for full package versions as well as OEM and a second edition update disk for existing Windows 98 users. Windows 98 second edition did not ship with the WinG API or RealPlayer 4.0, unlike the original release of Windows 98, both of these being superseded by DirectX and Windows Media Player. Windows 98 did not, for whatever reason, come with uh, Front Page Express either, window, which um, actually was quite a bone of contention for me because, you know, when I got my first Windows 98 machine, I really enjoyed messing about with websites and, um, you know, always uh, fancied the idea of uh, having my own web page. So that's exactly what I would do um, on my computer when I first got it, was uh, basically create wee web pages. Microsoft planned to stop support 
of Windows 98 on January the 16th, 2004. However, because of the continued popularity of the operating system, that being 27% of Google's page views were on Windows 98 systems during October to November 2003, Microsoft decided to maintain support until July the 11th, 2006. Support for Windows ME also ended on this date. Under minimized software support, now the Windows 98 SE market share as publicized by Hetsync had diminished slowly to 2.7%. Windows 98 is no longer available in any form due to the terms of Java related settlement Microsoft made with Sun Microsystems. In 2011, Microsoft update Microsoft removed the update websites for Windows 98 and Windows 98 second edition. So what did you need to run Windows 98? Well, minimum system requirements were Intel 486, DX266 MHz or compatible CPU with a math coprocessor. Obviously a Pentium was recommended. 16 megs of RAM, 24 megs recommended. It is, it is possible to run on 8 megs on machines with the slash NM option used during the installation process. At least 500 megs of disk space. The amount of space required depends on the installation method and components selected, but virtual memory and system utilities as well as drivers should be taken into consideration. VGA or higher resolution monitor, 640 by 480. CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive. Floppy install is possible, but slow. Actually, if you want to see Windows 98 being installed on floppy disks in real time, then uh, the Maritime girl has actually done a video on that. Microsoft mouse or compatible pointing device is an optional for Windows 98. Now users can bypass hardware requirement checks with the undocumented slash NM setup switch. This allows installation on computers with processors as old as the 8386. Would I recommend installing Windows 98 on such a machine? No, I would not. Now Windows 98 is not designed to handle any more than 1.0 gig of RAM without changes. Workaround and third party patches are available to fix this shortcoming. Both Windows 98 and 98 SE have problems running on hard drives bigger than 32 gigs and certain Phoenix BIOS settings. A software update fixed this shortcoming. In addition, until Windows XP Service Pack 1, Windows was unable to handle hard drives that are over 137 gigabytes in size with the default drivers because of missing 48-bit logical block addressing support. While Microsoft never officially fixed the issue, Unofficial patches are available to fix this shortcoming in Windows 9X, although the author stated that data corruption is possible and doesn't guarantee that it would work as expected. So, to finish this video off, let's take a look now at Windows 98 Second Edition. So, this is Microsoft Windows 98 Second Edition. Now, unlike Windows 95 OSR 1 and 2, this was actually available to end consumers. Indeed, if you happen to live uh, in the UK, believe it or not, Windows 98 Second Edition was actually a free upgrade to people who had bought the original. Um, so if you brought a receipt and proof of purchase or what have you into a shop you would get um, a Windows 98 um, FE to SE step up edition 
Just basically like the uh, Windows 98 upgrade, except um, to qualify to use that version, you have to have um, a Windows 98 first edition CD. So, what's different in this version? Well, Windows 98 second edition brought with it um, the Windows driver model. Um, it also brought internet connection sharing. So if you had an internet connection on your Windows 98 machine, you can actually share it across the network. It, um, it also came, believe it or not, with the Internet Explorer 5. You can uh, tell that by uh, the fact that it has Microsoft Outlook Express. And for some reason, I'm not necessarily able to click anything here. Oh, now I am. Um, <coughs> And obviously, because Internet Explorer 5 is installed, the des active desktop update has been refined a wee bit. The start menu, okay, this is actually um, running at a higher resolution than I had 98 first edition running at, but I was able to actually install it in VMware, as Windows 98 um, second edition has none of the issues that uh, first edition had, plus I could get uh, sound to go as well without uh, too much stuttering and what have you. So the start menu looks not as kind of tall and gang gangly as it used to. Um, Windows 98 uh, second edition comes with absolutely no channels at all. I don't know why my copy of 98 first edition didn't either, but uh, should have done. Um, but no, this has no channels, but there um, you can still make use of the active desktop in Windows 98 as you would have been able to in Windows 98 first edition um, but let me show you some one of the other refinements you may have uh, remembered the scrolling um, links bar from uh, IE4 well in IE5 you get a nice wee drop down menu with the links that don't actually fit on the links bar and whereas in with IE4 it would have uh, actually the buttons would have actually gone over the edge and you know if you couldn't access any of the buttons to the right of um, the window border well too bad however on 98 second edition you once again have a wee drop down menu that has uh, the buttons there I think Internet Explorer 5 brought a wee bit of finesse to the active desktop I'm going to be honest, it did, it, um, and I felt that um, systems with the active desktop update, so that'd be 95 or NT4 or Windows 98, <coughs> they seem to work better with um, Internet Explorer 5 and 6. Just tended to be quite a fair bit more stable. stable. So one of the other features that I failed to mention actually in Windows 98 first edition, I don't believe this, is, um, is this, the accessibility wizard. Now this was included in Windows uh, 98 as was the magnifier. So there you go. Um, so the magnifier bar, pff, was it's all right I think for you know, people who might need to, you know, just quickly uh, enlarge something on the screen. But really, it's no match for a fully featured screen magnifier. Um, but the uh, accessibility wizard, it does kind of uh, behave a lot like the um, Assistive Technology Center in Windows Vista. In fact, it's a, and 7 and above. In fact, it's a precursor to that, but it's, um, and while you can answer questions, you know, based on disabilities, this is only for uh, this particular level, so it's like, let's, let's try doing this for myself. I am blind or have, uh, or have difficulty seeing things on screen. Next. So I can change the scroll bar size, nice. Change the icon size. I could choose 
um, a high contrast theme. For whatever reason, it'll only give me the standard size though. Default windows colors. Current color scheme. Whereas I think uh, the Windows Vista and Windows 7 tend to go more in depth. It's almost like it's actually, in, in notes, it's actually more like um, there's an actual um, assessment of needs advisor sat inside your computer asking you questions about, um, you know, things that you might find difficult in life and then ch uh, bringing up the best options for you. But, um, well, that's... Uh, now that's not for uh, this video. This is Windows 98. But this version of Windows 98 actually restored my faith in the operating system. I used to hate 98. Hate it with a passion. I mean, I, I will always remember um, going into PC World uh, with my parents sometime in 1998. Before 90, Windows 98 came out. Um, and I spent basically the afternoon messing about on this Packard Bell machine which was absolutely fine, um, but you know that you know it was a good good little machine. But uh, when I went back after Windows ninety eight had been released, well, things were slightly different then. It was, yeah, they had a machine there that just every thing you did it would take ages, it would crash, it, it was just horrible really was so obviously Windows 98 was very sluggish and you know at the time and memory I think was um, quite expensive back then so Windows 98 obviously obviously needed a lot more RAM for the um, active desktop and what have you and um, computers just went been supplied with it you know there was a lot of machines with you know 32 megs of RAM that were sold with Windows 98 on them you know and really what you want is 64 or even 128 megs so with this version of 98 there's really not much else that um, I can really show you because I mean a lot of it a lot of the changes between Windows 98 first edition and second edition were actually done under the hood. But seriously, it is a massive difference overall. This version of Windows 98 has made Windows 98 one of my favourite all time operating systems. Anyone who knows me <laughs> will know all about this. In fact, when I'm chatting with the uh, Road Geek and Elmo Three, and I, and uh, they hear the uh, Windows ninety eight startup sound, they'll get on. They'll be like, "Oh yeah, this is a J approved call now." Um, but this is um, why I selected Windows ninety eight as the operating system that would run on the Flying Scots machine. It's just so versatile so fantastic for especially back in the day it could run could run your old games you, you know you had the full DOS mode still and yet it was new enough to run Microsoft Office 2002 Internet Explorer 6 it ran Firefox up until 2.0 which was about you know 2006 2007 and it was it was just much better, it really was. So obviously Windows 98 now, it's way too old to use as a an everyday operating system. And to be honest, while it had, I think, a lot more staying power than uh, any other Microsoft operating system, well, apart from Windows 3.1, um, for consumers, a lot of people were using Windows 98 up until the mid 2000s. Um, but um, I think it has now been dwarfed by 
the number of consumers using XP for a much longer amount of time. And to be honest, I think for most consumers, Windows 98 going to Windows XP, I think that's exactly what happened. They just, you know, a lot of people skipped ME. Um, they wanted Microsoft had wanted Windows 2000 to be to become uh, the replacement for Windows 98, you know, and they were finally going to reunite. They were finally going to basically merge the uh, usability of uh, Windows 9X with the consumer friendliness with the um, with the impeachable stability of uh, the Windows NT platform. And they were going to combine this to create uh, Windows Neptune, but um, it just it never happened. And well, we ended up with uh, Windows ME uh, about a, a year and a quarter after Windows 98 Second Edition came out. So yeah, that was uh, that was quite an interesting time. Obviously, ME has had its fair share of. Um, problems but that's really for another video um, but that all kind of helped Windows 98 to keep its um, to keep its popularity that and well being on a Windows 9x platform was fantastic for uh, compatibility with games um, you know I mean at the time I you know back in uh, the 2000s for quite a while um, I used to run Windows 98 and Windows XP as a dual boot system because you know I had even I had software that I could not run on Windows 98 so I had to run it on Windows XP instead but hey ho I guess um, there's nothing more to show you now in Windows 98 second edition So that was a look at Windows 98 Second Edition. And it was that version of Windows 98 that actually made me like the operating system as a whole. Because unlike with my experience at PC World with Windows 98 First Edition, Windows 98 Second Edition definitely seemed to run very, very quickly and be very stable as well. And with that, I think I will draw this video to a close. I hope you guys have enjoyed my look back at Windows 98. Um, like I said, I mean, this is an operating system that has definitely made its mark on me. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video and please join me for my next one. Cheerio bye. <laughs>